Hey everyone, happy Monday. As you can see, it is dark where I'm at. I'm out of town uh, with family at a conference in Nashville. And if you've ever traveled with, um, with family, especially if you have young kids, in order to uh, get to a quiet space, that requires more often than not sitting outside like I am right now, or and getting up really early or, or staying up really late. So I'm up really early before the sun uh, and outside on the front porch of a place, a small place that we're staying uh, for this conference. So here we are. Uh, we are continuing in John uh, chapter 15. And what I'd love to talk to you all about today um, is this idea where Jesus has to have a heart to heart with the disciples. And he has to have some harder conversations because he's getting ready. Um, well, he is. Well, he's getting ready to go to the cross. But what he's having to do is have a hard conversation about what discipleship and following him looks like after he leaves and gives them the Holy Spirit later. He has to talk to them about how the world will perceive being a Jesus follower, being a disciple of Jesus, and how the world's not going to understand, they're going to be confused, um, and how they will even hate. Um, they will be hated because they follow the teachings of Jesus. With that, I want to talk about uh, a passage, a bridge passage to 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, 12, Paul's talking to Timothy, his protege, and he says this. He says, all who, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, all who desire to live a godly life will be persecuted. Will be. Um, <laughs> there doesn't seem to be a lot of room there for, uh, there's no wiggle room. If you desire to follow Jesus, persecution on some level is inevitable. That's what Paul tells Timothy. So when you think of persecution, I'm going to guess, for everyone watching this video, you're probably not thinking or feeling warm and fuzzy thoughts or feeling warm and fuzzy feelings. Uh, persecution can feel abstract or distant to us to live uh, in the United States, especially when we think about how uh, the apostles, Paul, uh, brothers and sisters on the other side of the world who are facing persecution. We don't face that same level or same kind of uh, persecution that they faced then or that brothers and sisters um, not in the, in the United States face now. However, Paul still says we will face persecution. So what do we do with that? How do we, how do we uh, handle that tension? Well, I think we have to learn to make peace with persecution for whatever that looks like uh, for us, whether it's a disagreement with a coworker over our faith or a family member or uh, the fact that holidays and family gatherings can be awkward because you go to church and you follow Jesus and your friends and family don't. Uh, persecution and the, the feeling of uh, being, being ostracized or treated differently or discouraged because of your faith can all be related to persecution. It's something that's expected. So does that mean that we just live with it and we have to learn to get over that feeling? No. Jesus says specifically in John 15 that the reason that the world hates is going to hate the disciples is because they really hate Jesus, but they don't know it. So really, Jesus leads the way. In persecution and they don't hate us they hate Jesus they they they, they don't even know how to explain uh, why they hate but they do so we can find peace in the different ways that we experience persecution because we have a loving gracious uh, Savior and Messiah who went before us and explained and, and set the expectation that this was gonna happen but Jesus also reminds us in the book of John that he overcomes the world. And regardless of any of the persecution we face, Jesus has been there, and through the Spirit, uh, the Spirit is with us. At the end of John 15, 
or uh, into John 16, actually, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit goes with us uh, when we face different kinds of persecution. So, not necessarily a cheerful thought in some ways uh, this morning or whenever you're watching this video, but a truthful thought, a real thought as it pertains to our faith. And so I hope uh, you all have a good rest of your day, good rest of your week. I will see you Thursday and see you soon.